Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be categorizing our tests and this is very important if we want to run our tests in different jobs. So we need to be able to categorize the tests and create specific tasks for those tests uh, that we for those categories right uh, so this is what we're going to be looking uh, on on how we can categorize our tests and if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell to receive notification of my next videos and i'm also going to be posting the links of the previous videos so you can keep it up so in the beginning of this whole bdd series we i did a I showed this presentation where we are we have different tests uh, in our API level. Right, so I have a health check first that's going to be running first in my pipeline. Then I run a sanity check. Then I do a acceptance test. Then functional test and then contract test. So in order for this to work, um, as I said in the beginning, I need to be able to separate which tests are those categories which tests are my health check which tests are my sanity which my acceptance test and so on i also need to be able to to separate my gradle tasks in to run those different categories so i need to say hey this task one is going to run the health check this task two is going to run the sanity and so on and so forth and when I have those tasks, then on my CI, I can say what is the priority, which one is going to run first, which is going, which one is going to run second and last, and so on. Right. So this is very important for us, right? And this is the beginning of how we're going to achieve that. So we have the project here that we have been working on. Uh, that we work uh, on last video. We created the Docker Compose on last video, and I'm going to post the links for this Docker Compose one. And we need to be able to separate our tests. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide which test the categories for each test. So I'm going to create the sanity category, right? So on my sanity category, I'm going to create a user test. And this is, I'm calling sanity. And my store also sanity why i chose those two as sanities because on my user i'm creating a new user right so i have a business this is a pet store i'm selling stuff in order for me to sell i need to be able to onboard a new user new users need to be able to register themselves in our store so if i'm not able to register any new user then this is a huge, huge problem, right? I can do marketing, I can do uh, promotion, sales, but if I'm not able to register those new users, they are going to buy on the competition. Right? Another thing is my, my, my ability to create an order, right? Now, okay, now that I'm able to create a user, that user needs to be able to, that user, that new user or any new or any existing users should be able to make an order, right? So the, the user can log in, that user needs to be able to also make an order and make a purchase. If, I'm, if the user cannot do that, again, the user is going to buy whatever that person wants on the competition. Right, so those two are my sanity because those are priority, the first priority that needs to work. Doesn't matter if my store can fly, can whatever, if I'm not able to onboard a new user and enables that user to make a purchase. So those are the sanity ones. We already have some somewhat ability to run uh, our test, our, our, our tasks, our, our tags, right? We in our cucumber runner, we have a cucumber option saying uh, run all the tags that are not whip in quarantine. So if I go here to animal and I put this whole thing as whip, right? Uh, it's not this one, let me put on the pet. This whole thing is going to be whip. And I can choose, I don't know, uh, user. This one is whip as well. 
So if I run my test, you can open the report now. And you're going to see that uh, the user is not here because there was only one test. And my whole pet feature is not here because I whipped the whole uh, the whole pet feature. So we have somewhat that ability, but now I need to create tasks for those abilities, right? So let me remove this and remove this. Right. So Cucumber has a few options that we can do that, right? So again, you already saw this. We can take a look at the uh, at the documentation there is a possibility of creating a specific task on Cucumber, this big task here, that you can see that you can pass some arguments. And these arguments are very similar to the one that we already have. If you take a look at our code, we have an argument for tags, and I specify which tag is going to be run, run or not. I specify my plugin, which is the report, and I specify where are my features. And here you can you can pass more arguments here. You can see that it's it has the plugin one, which is this one, and has the feature one, right? Which is this one here. So I could pass a I could have a cucumber task that would execute uh, a set of tags, and then I'll have another cucumber task that will execute another task, and so on and so forth. But there's going to be a lot of duplication and a lot of coding uh, in order for that to happen. Uh, I can make it prettier, my, my, my better, let's say my cleaner, my, my greater, but it's still going to be a lot of coding, and I don't need to do that. And the reason why is if, if we take a look at our Cucumber Runner, you're going to see that the Cucumber Runner uses JUnit. You can see that's JUnit, JUnit, and JUnit. So, and we were able to run the test, right? Which you just saw that we were able to run the test and it did not run those weeps. I'm going to run it again. This time I'm going, I'm going to remove the Docker Compose because it's going to take too much time and I don't need to keep running that. So I'm going to say Docker Compose up to run only once and I don't need to keep running. So when I run my test, what's going to happen is, so the, 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 task, the test task is able to, it, it runs JUnit tests. So the fact that we are using JUnit, it already identifies the Cucumber and is already going to run this thing here. We just need to be able to change this a little, tweak that a little. So we're going to go to the Cucumber reference for the command line. And you're going to see that there are various ways that you can change this, right? You can pass on through the, the CLI command for the Maven, in our case it would be Gradle. And you can pass various stuff here. You can see that you can pass the tag, uh, the name, the, to, to, to run the tests with a specific filter name. You can filter it by tags. You can change the, the order. So you can do various things here. Right, but there is an order specifically that uh, we we need to use in order to run this. Right? So the order is when I have uh, when I have a CLI, right? This this is the CLI. This is going to be the last order, right? So the preference is going to be the cucumber option, right? So whatever is on the cucumber. Cucumber options is the one that's going to be stuck with, right? The CLI is going to be ran, then it's going to take, uh, it's going to look at a Cucumber properties file. We're not going to look at this file right now, but you may have a file called Cucumber properties. And it's going to look for these properties in this file. And whatever properties is in, is in here is going to uh, take precedence over the CLI. And the last precedence, the priority uh, in this case is going to be the Cucumber options, right? So CLI, Cucumber options, and the most priority is the Cucumber, sorry, CLI, Cucumber properties, and then Cucumber options, right? Cucumber options is going to override everything. But if you use, 
Unix variables O or Java system properties, then those have priority over everything. And that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using, uh, I'm going to show both of them, um, but right now we're going to be using Cucumber, uh, sorry, the Unix uh, variables. So what you're going to do, I'm going to export a variable. And I use the keyword export because I want that variable to be able to be accessed by this session, this terminal sessions, and by the JVM running in this terminal. That's why I use the export command. Uh, I have I explained this in a little bit more detail with examples in one of my videos related to Unix. I'm going to be posting that too, so you can uh, keep it up and. I am going to use this tag here, right? And this tag is, uh, since this is a Unix variable, I need to put caps, all caps, and instead of dot, I use underscore. So it's going to be cucumber filter tags. And I pass on the tags that I wanted to execute, so sanity. So if I do echo or printing, it's sent here for this variable. So now I can run my test again. Let me clean so we can have a clean one. There we go. When I come here, only two tests were executed. Those two that we tagged as sanity, right? So the fact that I just created a variable here, enable me to uh, execute only those uh, scenarios with that, those tags, which is very powerful, right? Uh, of course, you need now to be able to uh, pass on that to the Gradle, but this is the first step of understanding how we can do that. Now we can see how can Gradle uh, create those variables in Unix uh, or how can I create those in Java properties that is going to enable us to to have more flexibility on our tags on our tasks, right? So this is what I wanted to show you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notification of my next videos. Uh, if you have, if you like it, give the thumbs up, and it's really important that you do. So that's how the channel can keep growing. And I see you on my next video.